Hello and welcome back. It is Thursday, December 3rd, and we're here to talk about this week's space and astronomy news. We talked about the Chang'e 5 mission last week. Well, it reached the moon on Tuesday, landed with this amazing video, and it's actually finished collecting its sample as of Wednesday night. So it's expected to have launched from the surface sometime today, and it should be back to Earth in just a couple weeks. This is really exciting as the first lunar sample return mission since the 1970s. Last week I told you that the NSF had decided to decommission the Arecibo radio telescope in Puerto Rico after several cable breaks had rendered the structure unsafe. Well, unfortunately, their concerns were validated as the entire structure actually collapsed overnight on Monday. The observing platform was suspended above the dish with several of these cables through each tower, and the tower that had previously had the cables break, the remaining cables broke, sending the observing platform plummeting down into the dish and it's just really sad news for this amazing telescope that has served us so well for almost 60 years. In slightly happier, though perhaps in no less destructive news, the SN8 test flight for SpaceX's Starship is planned for sometime this weekend. The NOTAM, which is the Notice to All Airman advising people of planned flights, was filed for Friday through Sunday. A test fire of the engines was completed last week, and Starship is ready to go for its test flight. This test flight is planned to an altitude of 15 kilometers. For reference, the International Space Station orbits at 400 kilometers. The goal of this test flight is to test the engine ascent, the body flaps, and most importantly, the belly flop maneuver. <laughs> There's a lot going on with this launch, and Elon Musk gave it only a one out of three chance of success. But even failure will be a great learning experience about the Starship and its capabilities. Speaking of launches, we have a lot of updates for this week. In Japan, an H-2A rocket successfully launched a Japanese data relay satellite into orbit on Sunday from the Tanegashiba Space Center in Japan. This was Japan's fourth space launch this year. The Soyuz STA launched on Tuesday from the Guiana Space Center with its payload of a military observation satellite for the UAE. This launch was actually originally planned for back in March, but has been delayed several times due to issues with the vehicle and the pandemic. But it has now gone off successfully and the satellite was placed into orbit. Another Soyuz launch, the 2.1B, launched on Wednesday evening from the Plesetsk Cosmodrome in Russia. Its payload was three Russian civilian communication satellites and some smaller rideshare satellites. In Falcon 9 news, a static test fire was completed successfully today in preparation for a launch on Saturday. This launch is going to be the first flight of the upgraded Cargo Dragon capsule, and it's for a resupply mission to the International Space Station. The weather is currently projected to only be 40% favorable, so keep an eye on the weather and hopefully the new Cargo Dragon will get to launch on Saturday. And lastly, in some very exciting news for astronomers, the Gaia Early Data Release 3 was released today. So the Gaia mission is a space satellite that's used to observe stars in the Milky Way. This is an ESA mission whose goal is astrometry, which is basically to measure the motions, distances, and positions of stars in the Milky Way. The mission was launched in 2013 and has already provided two data releases that have given us so much information about the stars around us. This newest data release includes the location on the sky, the parallaxes, and the proper motions for almost one and a half billion sources. It was released today to the public, and you can bet that many astronomers have jumped right on it to get started on the science that they can do. This amazing data set can benefit basically all areas of astronomy, from stellar astrophysics to exoplanets to galactic structure to mergers. There's a lot in there. And even though it sounds like, you know, billions of stars is a lot, it's still only about 1% of the stars in our galaxy. Space is big. <laughs> but it's really great to have this data release, so congratulations to the Gaia team, and I cannot wait to see what awesome science comes out of all this data. So there you have it. That's this week's space and astronomy news. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you again next week. Bye.